In this video, we'll be taking a look at the slope of a line. Remember, in our graphing this year, we're looking at how to do quick sketches of graphs instead of making a table of values. Investigating how the slope affects a certain linear equation might help us do that. Remember from last year, your definition of slope is the steepness of a line. In an equation, I might see that slope represented by the variable m. You remember slope mostly by changing by rise over run. But it may be helpful going forward if you think of slope in terms of change in y over change in x, since that is what we're doing when we calculate slope. Think about it. When you go to the grocery store and someone calculates your change, what are they doing? They're taking the amount that you gave them and they are subtracting the amount that you owe. If I find the change in y, I'll be subtracting my y values. If I find my change in x, I'll be subtracting my x values. Another way you might see this represented is with the use of the delta symbol. Delta y over delta x means change in y over change in x. Let's look at a couple of examples. If I want to find the slope of a line passing through two given points, I'm gonna find my change in my y values over my change in my x values. So showing my work, I would have delta y over delta x is equal to six minus zero over negative one minus negative three. Remember, it doesn't matter which order you subtract your y values. You could do six minus zero, or you could do zero minus six, as long as you're consistent in your denominator. For example, you do not want to do six minus zero in the numerator and negative three minus negative one in the denominator. Your points need to line up. So when we do this subtraction, we have six minus zero gives me six. Negative one minus negative three is really negative one plus three. So we get two, six divided by two gives me a slope of three. Next example, we have negative one, negative three, and five, negative three. I'm essentially going to do the same thing with this set of points. Remember, these are two points on my coordinate plane, and to find my slope, I am going to find my change in y over change in x, which means I'm going to do negative 3 minus negative 3 over 5 minus negative 1. That would give me negative 3 plus 3, which would be 0, and 5 plus 1, which would be 6. 6 divided, or 0 divided by 6 would give me 0. If I have nothing and I split it into 6 pieces, I still have nothing. So my slope is zero. Let's take a look at what this would look like on our coordinate plane. If I were to graph these two points, I would graph negative one, negative three, and I would graph five, negative three. give me this line right here. Notice that line has a zero slope. Remember, slope is our steepness of our line. Since that line is flat horizontal, it has no steepness. So it has a zero slope. Another example would be to look at the points negative two, one, and one, negative three. I can subtract find my change in y over change in x, which would give me negative three minus one over one minus negative two. Negative three minus one would give me negative four, and one minus negative two would give me one plus two, three. So my slope is negative four thirds. If I'm graphing that on my coordinate plane, I'd have negative two, one, 
and 1, negative 3. I would have this line here. And just like you remembered from last year, I could take those two points and count my rise and my run, and I would still get my slope. So if I'm going from this point to this point, I would be dropping down 4 and then going over 3 to get to that next point, which gives me my slope of negative 4 thirds. Let's take a look at D, 0, negative 1, and 0, 4. Let's see what happens. When I find my change in y over change in x, I'm going to have 4 minus negative 1 over 0 minus 0. 4 minus negative 1 would be 5. 0 minus 0 is 0. Hang on a second. Can we divide by 0? Can you have 5 pizzas and split them into nothing? That doesn't make sense. So we call this an undefined slope. look on our graph at why we would call it undefined. When I graph these points, I have 0, negative 1, and I have 0, 4. So I have this line here, which gives me my y-axis. That line is going to have an undefined slope. Think of it this way. If I'm standing, my little trick for this, if I'm standing at the top of this line and I step off, I will no longer be defined, hence an undefined slope. Just a little way to remember that. We can classify lines by slope. The first type of line that we could have is a positive slope. Positive slope lines have an M, my slope, is greater than, one, greater than zero, and looks like that red line there. I can also have a negative slope, my negative slope is going to have a, a slope value of less than 1, and it will look like that red line there. I can also have a zero slope, which we've already taken a look at, or a no slope. That would be when my slope equals zero and looks like a horizontal line. And lastly, I could also have, you guessed it, my undefined slope where m has a denominator of 0 and is that vertical line in red. <coughs> one of the things that you'll be asked to do is find a missing coordinate given one point and the slope. Here's how you would do that. For this one, I have points 3, y, I no, don't know what that coordinate is, and 1, 5. But I do know my slope is negative 2. I'm going to set it up the same way that I did previously. I'm going to find my change in y over my change in x, which means I'm going to do y minus 5 in my numerator and 3 minus 1 in my denominator. It is OK to do y minus 5, but then when you're solving, you'll have to deal with the negative. And we've talked about before that that could cause problems, that could cause mistakes in your work. That is my change in y over my change in x, which is my slope. So this is equal to m. But I know m is equal to negative 2. So I can replace that m with negative 2 over 1. Now I have a proportion that I can solve. I'll simplify 3 minus 1. and then cross multiply. From here, it becomes an equation. Just like we've been solving, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I'll get y is equal to 1. There is a check for this. If I go back quickly and replace 1 here, I get 1 minus 5. over 3 minus 1, which is negative 4, over 2, which is in fact negative 2. So I know I have the answer correct.
let's look at another example just like that. I'm going to do my change in y over change in x, which gives me y minus 1 over 4 minus negative 2. If I simplify that, then I'll have y minus 1 over 6. I know this is equal to m, and I know my m is 2 thirds. So that means I have y minus 1 over 6 is equal to 2 thirds. Now I can cross multiply, and remember when I'm cross multiplying, this numerator does need to be in parentheses. So what I will get 3 times y minus 1 is equal to 12. Then solve my equation. I get 3y minus 3 is equal to 12. Add 3 to both sides. y is equal to 15, divide by 3, so I know y is equal to 5. Again, to complete my check, I go back and plug it in, and I'm going to say 5 minus 1 should be over 4 minus negative 2. Here, I get 4, down here I get 6, which is equal to 2 thirds which is the slope I started with. Another thing that you might see referred to is rate of change. When I'm talking about a rate of change, it's a comparison of two quantities that are changing. It's another word for slope. Let's take a problem, we'll take a look at a problem that might use that vocabulary. You're traveling by car, and you leave home at 8 a.m. By 8.45 a.m., you are 36 miles from home. Find your average speed in miles per hour. Another way I could phrase that question is I could say find your average rate of change. So really what I'm looking at here is I have two points. I have a point for starting at home, 8 a.m., um, and I'm zero miles from home. And then I have 8.45 a.m. and I'm 36 miles from home. So my rate is going to be 36 miles in 45 minutes. Remember, 45 minutes is 3 quarters of an hour. When I simplify this, I end up with 48 miles per hour. 48 miles per hour would be my rate of change. 